what is fair. We all have an idea of what is. And while it's tempting to think that we know these principles innately, I mean, the truth is it's more likely that we believe them because we've been taught them, either through study or experience. Through our life, we come to know what is right, responsible, and what we think is just. For many, the first formal instruction in this regard is in a school class, physical education. Here, human relationships are tested, and our human nature is exposed. We learn about teamwork, communication, leadership, discipline, and we get a glimpse of what people can do and learn about the rules that keep order. PE is one of the earliest public arenas that we step out into as young people. And it's one of the very first places we develop a sense of what is fair. One of the lessons in fairness that we learn through sports is team selection. It frequently starts with two athletic, outgoing students chosen as leaders who, in turn, choose who they want on their team. Naturally, the most gifted, usually the tallest or the most nimble kids, are picked first. A past performance is also a factor in decision making. People are chosen because they've excelled in scoring points in past games. The cream of the crop is hand-picked. And in the end, the leftovers are presented as obstacles to be dealt with. And of course, that's the camp I found myself in as a kid. The other uncoordinated, nearsighted, untrained, and frankly, uninterested people stood with me shuffling our feet against the wall. Now, it's not that we wanted to be chosen first. I mean, truth be told, I, along with others, would have preferred to be exempted from this whole ordeal altogether. But finishing last in the selection, that wasn't what you wanted either. The whole procedure had exposed how undesirable and unwelcome some people were. But it's difficult to fault this team selection method too much. I mean, those building lineups want unsurprisingly players with talent, and they rightly choose those who will most likely score points or prevent those on the other team from doing so. It's, it's a winning strategy. And in many ways, it's equitable too because each captain chooses alternatively. The talent is spread across two teams. No one side gets all the best players. This team building lesson was likely the same one the landowner in today's gospel had learned. So that when he came to the marketplace, he sought the strongest, the healthiest, the most able operatives for his crew. And perhaps he'd worked with some of these guys before. Each time he approached the marketplace, he looked for the most valuable additions to the team, those who would harvest the most. And so at the start of the day, the landowner, he chose his front line. And at nine, he made his second choice. At noon, a third, and again at three o'clock, until until the end of the day when apparently there was still more work to be done, the landowner was left with the leftovers. And these were the people that he and others had passed over. And, hey, maybe for a good reason. But today, today everyone is hired. And the zinger is that everyone gets paid the same. And, and maybe that seems unfair. 
Why should latecomers get the same compensation? Should those who aren't as gifted at harvesting crops get paid as much as those who are? Now let's put a fine point on it. Should persons who are struggling or with impairments, whether hidden or visible, be given equal opportunities? Hmm. The world may say no, but God says yes. Everyone in God's vineyard is blessed. Those that are chosen last, for whatever reason, don't miss out or get any less compensation. Regardless of talent or performance, they will get paid. And that is because there are no undesirables in the kingdom of God, no leftovers that God is forced to somehow assimilate. Everyone has a place. Yes, everyone. So don't feel left out if you're standing over there by the wall, not good enough. Stop shuffling your feet and, and wondering, will God pick me? Hold your head up high. There's no reason to worry. Don't let the order concern you. No matter when you are chosen, you are chosen. You are chosen. blessed.